thank you all for giving me the opportunity to speak with you. Ever since learning about this award, I feel like I've worked night and day for this, which to some people might seem a little odd given that I'm also a millennial. <laughs> but what do I really mean when I say millennial? For me, it means that I have a daily relationship with technology. And when I mean daily, I probably mean hourly. It means I share connections, meaningful ones, with people across the country and across the world through a screen. I started to think about this lifestyle and technology in general when I went to graduate school for industrial design. Before that, I was in ceramic departments, which taught me to make with my hands. But I was more interested in industrial techniques with its seriality. During my design training, I was inundated with processes like 3D printing, laser cutting, CNC milling. But from that introduction, I also missed the spontaneity from working with my hands and inconsistency that I could get. Industrial methods were just too perfect in its multiples. But instead of going back to working solely in craft, I decided to hybridize the two genres together. This is my CNC machine and the main component to my practice. It goes back and forth, side to side, and up and down using a program that I generate. It's in my home studio and far from immaculate as one might think a digital output center would be. As you can see in the frame, I use a shoebox to store materials, so it's dirty, probably another millennial trait. When we think of industrial tools, we picture objects that are perfect and identical. I want to ask what would happen if we used tools that weren't the same from one another. This is a picture of handmade brushes with various animal hair that I attach to my CNC machine and brush ceramic objects with cobalt. Just as an illustration, here is a diagram of the process. The machine starts by dipping into a bowl of cobalt, and then travels to a ceramic tile or a plate. It completes movements that I program using digital modeling software. Because I use a handmade tool, I get a different result every single time, even though the motions are calibrated to repeat over and over again within a tolerance of 0 0.02 millimeters. Here's a video of it in action. What excites me about this process is that I can get a graphic mark that is inconsistent, gestural, and spontaneous, even while using an industrial technique that is more or less hands-off during the actual production. On this tablet series, I've drawn a selfie to reference digital culture and our obsession to let you know where I am and what I'm up to 24 hours a day. But to me, what is even more interesting than that is that we don't always see the connection between this type of selfie and a self-portrait from 100 years ago. I want to link history with contemporary culture to show that it's an evolution, not just a leap into the digital. Here's another tablet that had the same motion from the CNC machine, but with a different brush. I love how the individuality of each brush acts as a metaphor for human uniqueness. Like people, some images tell you the whole story, or like this one, are a bit of a mystery. Or, again, same toolpath, but wildly different result. I don't see this as a failure to represent a portrait, because again, the machine is doing the same movements, but the handmade brush acts as a variable for expression. 
I choose to work in blue and white because it has cultural roots. As an Asian American, I want to examine my identity in the digital age because most likely your first impression of me is my profile picture and name. The blue adds an element of heritage and pride. As you can see on the top left tablet, um, I put gold fingerprints on. I want to visually allude to the hand, and I think that the fingerprint is a great symbol for a touch screen. I also want to talk about the interactive screen like a tablet that is both a two-dimensional surface and a three-dimensional form. It's parallel to a ceramic tile, which is flat but also occupies space. Screen-based objects like this can run from anything like these tablets to computer monitors. When we get a brand new computer, we think of it as empty, something we can make our own and personalize. We visualize it blank, but in reality, this is the standard image that comes with an iMac, a landscape of mountains. This might seem like a generic image used as a placeholder, but to me, this tells me a couple of things about the millennial age, that even with new technology, we still want to see imagery to connect to, and that the screen itself can be seen as a frame in which to view art and culture. This porcelain tile has the exact same proportions as a 21 and a half inch iMac. I use the same process as the selfies to make a landscape image. I like the abstract yet direct visual connection to a computer. To be tongue in cheek, I've put three blue file icons in the picture as well. Like a computer, these files lay on top of the tile to create a sense of depth, almost blocking the desktop behind it. The tablet and iMac series is in fact a visual pun of portrait and landscape modes. Here's a more abstracted landscape. I've drawn vines on the, one of the markings to denote a tree. However, I've left the others open into, uh, for interpretation. These marks could be mountains, waterfalls, rivers, or none of the above. This abstraction plays a vital role in once again talking about our expectations of perfect rendering versus being more fluid in our interpretation of process. People always question whether the work I make is design or craft. I've learned to live in a hybrid genre where I can access tools from both worlds. I think now's the time to start thinking about how design can be start, uh, start being taught in ceramic departments and the opposite for industrial communities. We can benefit from each other. I don't see a reason to put up barriers between the handmade and the digital. Let's work with industry to change things. Let's also acknowledge that ceramic objects that we dislike, like the industrial coffee cup, are the fault of design, not process. In other words, generic objects coming out of industry is not the manufacturer's mistake, but the lack of having a knowledgeable designer. I'd like to see us start putting forward forward-thinking people in these kind of positions. I also make objects without using a CNC machine, but I still want to make a commentary on something not just millennials do, text. I want to portray the text message as the 21st century love letter, or in this case, imaginary letters to my ex-lovers and experiences about them. This one's about losing my virginity. The size of an iPhone is intimate and private, really only for one person to read at a time. I've written these messages in script to try to convey that they're just as personal and impactful as saying it or sending a traditional letter. I've also put my fingerprints at the bottom in Cobalt to show a visual record of tapping on a screen. But I also like how these could be interpreted as tear marks. Although these messages are about my experiences, I hope that they can create empathy to one's own experience with love and in which ways we try to communicate it. The new, powerful tool of the smartphone makes us even more connected with our emotions. It's a diary for us. I'm not looking to replicate a smartphone down to its smallest detail, but I want to use it as an image, an icon, to make a point of how it functions in our lives. I was in a long-distance relationship with my partner for five years, 
and without the internet, we would not have stayed together. I'm sure many people can relate to this, or at the very least have broken up via text message. The phone, tablet, and desk computer are just three archetypes of how we're progressing in the world. That, combined with manufacturing processes like 3D printing, laser cutting, CNC milling, we have so much potential for object making. Let's make sure ceramics is a part of that conversation. My vision is for artists and designers to collaborate with one, one another. Some people think that being a millennial is about having a million opportunities to choose from. But please, let's not forget about communities that don't have access to facility or education in design or ceramics, no matter what age they are. I was lucky enough to seek design out, get support from my family, and push forward. But there are many places where there's a lack of resources. Please consider taking action. This can be anything from donating a used 3D printer to a community center, or if you know 3D printing, teach pro bono or at a discounted rate for people that are truly interested in learning but don't have the funds for themselves. I think the more educated people we have, the stronger the field will become. Thank you. Thank you.